How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again. It's time to get into some animation, time to get that imagination all cranked up, get into some creativity, and it's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from Edward Artisan. And if you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. I really love his, his style. I think he's really a phenomenal illustrator. He does something that isn't necessarily capture um, hyper-realism, but rather captures the feeling um, behind a story. And I think that he does that really well. Uh, uh, more of a sketchy style of work um, but with just overall really captures a feeling of a moment uh, this is some of his uh, war sketching that he did um, and you can just really feel uh, you know what what it would have been like there like that that moment of it's not necessarily a depiction of the actual like a photograph almost but more what was the feeling like of the person who was there, who was sketching, who was feeling that emotion is really what he grasps, which is a really interesting illustrative way to work. And I think his stuff is gorgeous. I really like the, the light watercolor, um, not a ton of color uh, tones and tonality to his work. And I really feel like his composition is, is just works wonderfully together. A really nice grouping, um, especially in this one where you have almost like a single and then you have two and then you have this group that uh, separates really nicely um, nice composition overall for sure and just gorgeous illustrative work so i urge you guys to check out more stuff from him i, I really like his characters I, like i said i feel like there's a little bit of a deceptively uh, a simple quality to his work that that's just gorgeous that really works well with with illustration for sure oh that one came from that's a extra one from another project uh yeah just gorgeous stuff so I did want to share a quote that I was able to find. Um, I believe this one was from a letter that he wrote. Um, and he said, I realized that most of the skill I possess came from that endless doodling. And I, I thought that one was a great quote because it's, it talks about that lifestyle or that journey uh, methodology of mastering a craft where it's less about, oh, what book do I need to, to uh, read or, or what class do I need to attend or what conference do I need to go to and more about it's a lifestyle choice. It's always having that creative muscle uh, in the background working, you know, that little bit of doodling or always, you know, if you're a musician, you know, kind of keeping humming little notes or making up little songs to yourself all the time. Just that, that lifestyle choice or that journey where you're continuing to make another step and another step and another step. And it's not necessarily about the destination, but just about building that lifestyle. And I think that's a really great, um, great quote from him. I know that I tend not to uh, I get I get to be a little bit too much of a, of a per perfectionist, especially with um, illustration work and stuff. Um, I, and I, I miss some some days uh, just doodling in sketchbooks where I have really no purpose or anything, just to do it, just to do it, which is really fun. Um, so I got to keep that in mind as well. Uh, let's go ahead and get into some animation. Uh, if you watched yesterday's video, this is going to be part two. We're just doing a sword attack animation. We're using the goon rig that comes from the How to Cheat in Maya books. I'll throw a link in the description below. And if you're not familiar um, with what we'll be doing for the rest of the video, um, we're just going to continue on with uh, what we were working on yesterday. I know there were, uh, I didn't really like where the head was, was moving before. Um, this hand we didn't really do anything with uh, yet. want to clean up this foot a little bit more kind of track our arcs a little bit, maybe tone up our timing, and then just do some more polish there. We didn't really do anything with the fingers or any facial expressions or anything yet. Um, so let's watch it a couple times, and I think we're going to see pretty much that same stuff that I talked about. Okay, uh, so I want to make sure that we're still working... I'm going to create a new camera because I like that camera actually better for this shot versus what we originally had. So let's start off with working with this arm. Let's turn our new curves back on. And I did save an alternate version of this file. So we have one that we're picking up with. Like I said, it's always important to save multiple versions and to save often. And we are using Autodesk Maya 2014 for today's video. For more information on that and all the stuff that we've uh, talked about so far, check out the links in the description below. And let's this one, we'll start with it back a little bit more. And I think it could go here, maybe out a little bit. Let's do something a little bit different here. And then end up about here. So that's already 
to swing it back further here. We'll do like that. Bring it forward here. Over here. Try to get a better silhouette. extreme hit about there. Have this be a bit farther back here. So eventually we'll end back there. Let's see. It's a little too extreme there. Let's take all of this movement and we'll push it forward a frame here. Hold on, let's make sure we do it on everything, not just on rotate Ys. So we'll set it here. We'll delete that one. For this one, what I'm going to do is now leave it like that for right now. So set it about eight. Go a little bit up here. Delete that. Go a little bit down there now. Delete that one. Just to try to. Up a little bit more. 
taper off that movement again. Yeah, let's see how that feels. Okay, and I think I'm going to tone down the movement on this arm. It's just a little too over the top. little bit more variation um, between the arms here so this one I don't think I'll keep my little and same here we'll just tweak that down a little bit more just so there's one arm that's really got a lot of movement on it and the other one's a little more subtle give some contrast between those two sides there Let's take everything and we'll push it forward uh, two frames. Give it a little bit. Hmm. Maybe just on the. Well, we'll lose that posing that I have during the middle. Let's see. I want it to be dead, but I definitely want a little more variation there. And let's get the hand, sort of break it up here. is a little bit further out so that our silhouette's still okay. Let's see. needs to be a little bit more out here. Maybe this should be further down.
must be about there, just for spacing. wrist and scale it back a little bit more. It's a little too over the top still. And just scale it back. Just so it's not so floppy. Now I don't we have here. I like the feeling of it, but I feel it's a little too broken of a pose. So let's put it more like that. Let's try that now. Maybe even less. Let's it even higher. Let's try that. Let's see. So there's a little more power in there. Now is that going to mess with our silhouette too bad? This will probably be cleaner. Let's see this wrist right here. breaking it or lower it. Let's look at the arm again here. That's fine. This should be further. Just for the sake of silhouette. pose we have here is still too far forward. Feels like it should rest a little bit more back. Let's see. And then the wrist would need to be a little bit more Let's rotate some more. See how much we messed up that movement. Let's see. Yeah, let's go back. Let's see. I still think I want to take this pose though. Okay, so let's just look at the last portion of it. So it feels more like it's a resting pose.
feel like all of this, this stuff also is fine. This could probably go a little bit further back. Let's frames, a few more frames of that, so we can go here, delete that, and then bring that back a few more frames. That feels a little better. Now let's look here. Bring in a little bit more. again we'll add a little more up and down and then we can definitely kind of settle into that movement again 
further forward and move up less. I wanted to hold the little bits of food by just looking up there. So maybe I should be a little bit higher. I'm trying to look at the arc here too throughout it. So we favor that upward position, hold a little bit there. And then look at our spacing through there. So we'll go a little bit higher there. There's our translate Z. That way it stalls a little bit there. Save our file here real quick. We do get an extra 12 frames to begin with. Maybe, no, I'll go with a minus 24. So we get an extra second here. So we'll grab everything again and save our file real quick one more time. I think I just did that though. So we'll start off with everything here. So he's kind of naming where he's attacking, kind of like um, baseball players tend to um, do this kind of thing where they like uh, point to where they're going to hit the ball or something like that. It's kind of that same idea. Just to add another acting beat to our shot here might be kind of fun. And we'll have to do a little bit of uh, give in the hips and stuff too.
something a little bit. So I gave us a second so I can figure out how we're gonna get that in. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna ease into it a little bit and hold it for a couple of frames here too. for probably six more frames. So that would be nine. Can I move that over to you? Let's see. I'm going to hold it a little bit tighter than that. And cut a couple of frames from there. And let's see how it feels. more frame holds on that.
this is what we do. Okay, up, up, so we hold up for a little bit. Let's see. I think I want to go from taking another frame over to him, maybe two more frames here. So we like undershoot there. Let's see now. Mm, it still feels like we need to be a little more transient to make. Here. And I think we'll maybe cut a frame down here. Feels like it's a little too long. Yeah, let's see, I don't know.
tendencies. So what I want to do is keep that there. Just hold that transcendent Z position a little bit more. there. I think it flats off a little too much. So I'll keep it going here. Similar file here. And let's try and clean that a little bit. So I'll take what we have. So I know here I wanted to turn the hips a little bit. Z. Just a little bit of movement in the chest. stiffen off, but I feel like it's not enough. Now, 
missed something there. What do we what do we goof up here? Let's grab everything again. I did want that over a couple of frames here. I just want to grab something and move it. Alright. chest and the hips and do that so it happens a frame sooner and maybe a frame shorter for the distance too long. So let's cut this frame. Oh man, let's watch that now. And we want this to lead, so I'm going to take all of this and move that two frames. Three frames sooner. I'm going to take everything on the fingers and move that so it's a couple frames sooner. There we go. And let's see this. still think I want about two more frames here. Let's make sure I grabbed everything. I think I need another two frames here. Yeah, let's go three frames. Let's see. Yeah, that feels a little too long. Another one frame less. Let's see. Yeah, let's let the hand linger a little bit. Thank you. 
goes in the other two. It's a little bit stronger. And let's hold it a little bit tighter here too. Okay, now before we do that, I think I need another frames, let's go minus 36 here, and we'll grab everything, and we'll go there, and I think that we have our 22, so we still have a little bit of movement in this pose to start with. It's a little slower out of it and just punches in there. So let's um, take everything here. And again, we want the less, so we really rock it into that pose. index finger. Let's push that forward if I can. So it leads the movement there. Now let's see. How are we doing on time? Oh, we hit about our hour already. I think I want to do a little bit on the facial expressions, and then we'll make this a three-parter. So we added another, what, almost 60 frames onto here by doing this. And save our file again and let's look at the, the face for a little bit let's come up with a better expression now i'm not going to worry too much about the eyes that'll take a long time to do but i'll uh, worry about the eyelids and the mouth i'm not going to worry about the pupils too much on here just for the sake of time but let's uh the corners of the mouth out a little bit more. 
tilt on the jar here. in the lip. I thought there was one, but I guess not. a little bit more, get a really intense look, which one looks sleepy though, let's bring our brow, those brows down here a little bit more, and there's someone just really intensely looking at whoever it would be that he's pointing at. Should we kind of leave the action a little bit? So let's see. And let's get a couple frames less on that.
like to do blinks during the middle of movements there. It helps pop us change our expression into something else. Worried about the pupils so much because you're not gonna really see them from here. But okay, that jaw open is a little too jarring, so just do a little bit of that. I don't really want to do that so much here. Three more frames. two over the top, so we'll scale that back. Just something to add a little bit of character in there. Hold it till about five. Okay. A little bit faster. minimize it a little bit more. Let's see what we're doing. There we go, just so you see like a little bit of grinding there. Let's look at the shoulder we want to do, I think, starting on the shoulder here. So let's take what we have there. Pull the shoulder down a little bit. And pop it up. And then hold it back for a few more frames there. Just put a little bit of movement in the shoulder.
just so we get a clear silhouette. It's not as strong as posing. I like the head being a little bit down more, but. And now we gotta try and clean this up. I don't want to do one nearly as long as I did yesterday. Yesterday was like two hours, so um, we'll turn this into longer. Maybe we'll just keep going until we really uh, just do something a little bit different. So I know we'll do at least one more part. I want to still um, address the head. I like being able to get into some facial expression stuff with you guys. I think that's fun. Um, something just a little bit different too. Haven't really done too much on the fingers beyond the first little move there. But I feel like it's working a little bit better. We got some movement in that other arm that's working added that first uh, like 30 frames or so just to add another acting beat to our attack animation here like calling out where he's going to attack kind of like that idea um so yeah let me know what you guys think down down below as always if you're liking doing these kind of different uh format or different idea a little bit with our our daily uploads or hanging out with our animation time but let's take a look back at where we started we're looking at the beautiful work of edward artisan and he said I realized that most of what skill I possess came from that endless doodling. So that's where I think I'll leave you for today. I mean, that's a lot of the reason why I do these videos is to, you know, encourage you guys and inspire you to go off and create your own content, but also it helps me to, to stay fresh and to play around with different ideas and not be too um, focused on perfection, but just playing, doodling, coming up with ideas, sharing them with you guys. Um, maybe you guys learn something along the way, whether it's something to learn something new or learn something not to do or whatever it is but i love you guys lots i'm getting rambly so keep being awesome take another step in your journey because you can do it i believe in you you are the creative future so go out there and make something amazing and i think that'll wrap it up for today we'll do another part on this one tomorrow and we'll see you for some more animation tomorrow <laughs>